can the human cryopreservation that breaks the scientific limit really help us come back to life? On January 12, 1967, 72-year-old Bedford died of stomach cancer in a hospital in the United States. A few hours after his death, the president of the California Cryonics Society, Robert Nelson, and others quickly chilled his body with ice and promptly removed all the blood from his body and injected it with a bioprotective agent known as dimethyl sulfoxide. Because two-thirds of the human body is made up of water, if frozen directly, the water will form fatal ice crystals that can penetrate into cells and organs. The bioprotective agent reduces the freezing point and reduces the formation of ice crystals, allowing cells to survive in ultra-low temperature environments, a process known as vitrification. After the blood was replaced, Bedford's body was inverted in a liquid nitrogen container at minus 196 degrees Celsius and has not seen the light of day since then. The first frozen human in human history was born. They planned to revive Bedford after several decades when human medicine was capable of curing cancer, but 55 years later today, humans still have not found a way to treat cancer. Moreover, with the current level of medical knowledge, scientists cannot guarantee the safe thawing of a frozen human body, which has led to Bedford continuing to sleep in a cold liquid nitrogen container. However, many people still firmly believe that cryonic technology is feasible. In 2001, a Canadian baby named Erica spent six hours in minus 30 degree ice and snow. When she was found by her mother, her body was completely stiff, her toes were frozen together, her eyelashes were frosty, her body temperature had dropped to 16 degrees Celsius, less than half of a normal person, and her heart had already stopped beating. Almost everyone thought Erica was beyond saving, but when medical staff forcibly opened Erica's mouth and inserted a breathing tube into her throat, her heart miraculously began beating again. With the efforts of medical staff, Erica eventually recovered and returned to her normal life. In addition, many countries around the world have conducted experiments on animals that resemble resurrection from the dead. For example, Dr. Jiang. Jiao, a neurosurgeon at Renji Hospital, has revealed that animal resurrection experiments have been conducted in several phases, not only in dogs but also in primates, with great success. Even in November of the past year, French scientists successfully revived an ancient virus that had been dormant for 48,500 years. This means that theoretically, if the structure of the human body can be preserved intact, human cryogenic technology should also be reliable. However, where there are supporters, there are also opponents. For example, the famous cryobiologist Kenneth believes that human cryogenic technology can never succeed because it violates the laws of physics, chemistry, and molecular chemistry. Nevertheless, more than 500 people around the world have participated in the cryonic program, and the youngest cryonics patient is only 13 years old. Without exception, these people have all been put on pause, waiting quietly in cold liquid nitrogen containers for decades until they can be revived. Unfortunately, no one has successfully been revived from cryopreservation to date, and the cost is too high, which has even led some to suspect that human cryogenic technology is just a money-making conspiracy. But assuming that one day in the future, when human technology is advanced enough and frozen people really do come back to life, when complex factors such as ethics, family, and the value of life are combined, will society become chaotic? I think this is the most thought-provoking question about the human cryopreservation program.